sing this medley about the blood of Jesus. Amen? Cleansing blood, saving blood, healing blood. Hallelujah. Everybody sing it. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. upon us with beautiful weather. We prayed that uh, most of the pollen would be gone. I want to tell you who is here today. You, you, ought, to, you ought to know this. We have, had, we have had one who has had the uh, disease or the virus, and that's Tanya Hassan. And she was here for a couple of services, but today she is clear completely by the doctors. Glory. 
it's amazing. We haven't uh, had a lot of people sick, and uh, we have not uh, had anybody to die. And we just praise the Lord for that, and we, we pray for the people all the time. Glory. Glory, hallelujah. I, I thank God for those who have visited. There are some who've come from 50 miles, 60 miles around and further. We are, we're glad you're here. And I want to say in case he is here, Craig Stone and Janet. And uh, I want to say also that uh, Donnie and Donnie Jackson and Janet are here today. Donnie, Donnie's brother, Sam, Sammy, went to be with the Lord this past week. And a lot of prayers for Donnie and his family and for Sammy's family. I appreciate all the prayers that you do. Uh, also, we have a, a special birthday that I know is about to break right now, and that is with Gary Janney, and he's here. Gary, if you're here, well, can I see a light blink, Gary, somewhere? Uh, Gary, happy birthday. Happy birthday to Gary. Everybody, come on, happy birthday. <laughs> now, I don't always get to the birthdays, but not like used to. I used to, but I did it for some 20 years, and that's a pretty good record to call everybody on birthdays. But now it's, it's just virtually impossible, and sometimes I'll get it, and, and I hope you won't think that it's partiality or anything. It's just that sometimes I just don't have the, the time uh, to, to get to it or the energy to get to it, and mainly the time. But it's a joy to have you every time, and we want to know what is happening with you and with your family, and if anything happens, we want you to call our office. We're here all the time, and, uh, and I mean that almost all the time, and, and I'm here and we'll be here if you need me, and I don't live so far away, and we can come to help you, and we want you to know this. We want you to, to come and, uh, uh, to, the, to the services and feel free to come if you need to for prayer. We are here uh, for counseling, and we're always open to you, and we want you to know it. This church is yours, and we are here working uh, throughout the day, and we do it according to the dictates of the people in charge. We are co cooperating with them, and we told them that we would distance ourselves six feet apart, and we're doing that. When the six or seven singers sing on the inside, they are distancing themselves. The, when the musicians play, they're distancing themselves. We, are, we want you also to be praised because you have done it well and not getting out of the cars. We have to remain in the vehicles. I'm so sorry, but unless you have an extreme emergency or something, please, we ask you to do that. And we ask you to not leave until, unless an, a real emergency comes until we can do everybody at one time. It'll really make it better for everybody. But we want to gear this service to last probably 45 minutes to an hour every time. And so you'll have plenty of time to get in and get out and get back home and, uh, and get your dinner cooked. Now you're eating at home and not in the restaurants. I also want to thank you for supplying some needs that we have been able to meet, and some of you have helped to supply those needs. We have served hundreds of people from the church, and I mean we, we go down to the places downtown to where people live and stay who don't have anything to eat. And we've cooked things here and carried hot meals to them. Hundreds of meals have gone out several days a week. And if you would like to do something like you'd like to supply the needs for us for cooking this meal one day, if you'll call our office, we'll tell you what you can do and uh, how you can become a sponsor for that. And then we'll reach out to do what God wants us to do. In these terrible times that we live, it's going to take all of us together. We stick together, and we stick together in love. And so now I've made my uh, few announcements. Now I want to tell you what's on my heart. 
it's, it's not a teaching, but it is something from the Lord. I would never be so presumptuous as to stand before an austere uh, crowd like you and bring you something that was not from the Lord, that I felt was from the Lord. And the Lord has been talking to me and in that private time that we have. And what I'm going to say today is from the Lord. I hope that you can take it as from the Lord, as an encouragement. If we ever lived in a time when we had to have encouragement, it is today. We're learning it more and more every day. And I want to do it by the way we used to do it, by reading a scripture. And I'm not going to read all of the scripture, but just a part of it. And it's with the life of Jesus. When he gets back to the other side on the boat, he uh, encounters a man in Mark chapter 5 and uh, 20, 21, 22. And many people were gathered about him as they were near the Sea of Galilee. And verse 22 says, And behold, there came one of the rulers of the synagogue. That means he was a good Jew. And his name was Jairus. And when he saw Jesus, the Jewish man fell down at his feet and worshipped him. He begged him greatly. He said, my little daughter lies at the point of death. I beg you, master, would you come and pray for her? Then he got specific as to what he believed in. He said, would you come and lay your hands on her? Now I'm reading you from Mark chapter 5. Come and lay your hands on her that she will be healed and she shall live. Jesus took off and went with him right then toward his house. And many people followed him and thronged him. But he didn't get there. And a number of verses give an interlude here before he got to the house of Jairus. Because he had an opportunity to stop for a person that was in need. There's nothing that stops him like a touch of need. Everybody's all around him in those little streets. And Jesus is going to stop dead in his tracks. For a woman is going to reach out and touch him. And then he just takes his time in going to see Jairus. Now the fact of the matter was there that day we had a man who had already asked for Jesus to come. If you are courteous, you'll go to where the need is. Jesus was courteous, but Jesus is more than the fact of the matter. We have the facts of the matter among us today, and I want to share them with you. The people in authority have done this. But I want to give you the fact of the matter. The fact of the matter today is that worldwide, this coronavirus has gained to 2,350,075 cases by this morning. And that's up from Friday of 22,000 or 2,214,000. And we've had deaths this morning of 161,270. And that was up from Friday, 148,900 and more. And then the recoveries is something you want to always look at. The fact of the matter is, is that we've had 606,139 people to recover from this. Tanya being one of those, and, and others.
Now, in the United States, we're interested in that. We have become the epicenter. Epicenter meaning that it's the largest thing, the center of everything that goes around it. Very magnanimous. We, we have moved to 738,000 plus since Friday's from 680 to 738. 738,923 this morning. And we have up from 34,700 deaths up to 39,015 deaths with 68,285 complete recoveries. And these are happening. They are the, they are the facts of the matter. When you, you say, well, I want to deal with the fact. Don't give me anything but the fact. I don't know how true all of these facts are. What's in a number, you never know. But all I have is a number from the world, a record, and this is what the world record says. Now I want to tell you something that is new. We've been watching it and we've been distancing ourselves. We've been practicing good hygiene. We've been staying six feet apart. We've been covering our faces with masks or staying out of the way of others and not coughing or sneezing in their direction. The fact of the matter is that nobody knows, not World Health Organization, not any of the great doctors that we have, and they have done a bang up job, but they don't know why this is the quickest spread, con most contagious that we have ever seen. Now we know we had it when it, in, in the 1920s with the Spanish flu. And we lost many, many more in this country and in the world than we're losing now. But we're doing all of these things and it sounds like a winning combination for the facts. The fact of the matter is that if you do these things, you're going to win. We're going to win these things, but it's going to take you and me and everybody around us working at it. Now, but now I want to give you what the Lord told me. Now, when I say told me, I am not spooky, but I want to say what he impressed upon my spirit. I heard no audible voice, but it was close. And I thought that you'd like to know what's in my heart and what the Lord is talking to me because I want to know what's in your heart also. The Lord directed me and impressed upon my spirit a few months ago before this ever hit that I was to start teaching anyone who wanted to help me with this ministry, a healing ministry, the kind that this church was born in right here. We believe in the healing power of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and shout, it's all right. I, I do not know, I do not know how many others in the city it matters not right now. The fact of the matter is, is that we believe in the healing power of Jesus. And the Lord impressed upon me with this. You watch my hand now. And I want you to take your hand and put it out in front of you. Will you do that? The Lord impressed upon me to say, this is my hand, my son. And this is your hand. And I want to be your hand extended. And you are going to be my hand extended. And I'm going to bring you into a healing ministry in this area right here that God has given to us to be a healing place where people can come. I don't understand all of that. All I can understand is what he impressed upon me with a healing ministry. Now, this is what I gathered from him. He said, the rest of your ministry Boy, that sounds bad, doesn't it? 
He said to me, the last part of your ministry, my land, is going to be a ministry of healing and the laying on of hands. So I'm here to tell you that today as my people, that this was not done in a corner, but I wrote it down as the Lord gave it to me and have it in my desk. And I look at it every now and then. And the Lord impressed upon me that we had the people to do it. And that is you in these cars right here today. To be the hand of God that is extended with a healing ministry. I, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, it's virtually impossible. The fact is, Lord, it's virtually impossible for us to do that. And he says, I know that it's virtually impossible for you to do it. I know what the fact is. But you're going to learn the, not just the, the fact of the matter. You're going to learn something beyond that. You're going to learn the truth of the matter. And into my heart, he burned this thought. If you have me, my son, and my daughter, you have the truth of God. Because I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Can somebody say amen? So by Zoom and by, by things that I've done already for a month or so, or three, and, and now today I bring this to you, uh, and I've... I, I, just know that it's from the Lord. The fact of the matter is, hear this, that Italy and the Middle East with Iran and Spain and Paris and Lisbon, Madrid, Mumbai, and New Delhi, and New York, and Chicago, and Los Angeles, and Miami. That these places have become epicenters for this. We know that. That's a fact of the matter. And I said, Jesus, what are we going to do about that? And Jesus impressed upon me these words. Now, I know that I'm giving you a lot of things that the Lord impressed upon me. It, it, it matters a lot to me that you understand it and that you pray about it with me because I don't understand some things either. He said, you are supposed to raise a standard against the devil and against all the diseases that he's bringing upon the people. That standard is the banner that God has given to us. That banner tells us that the matter of truth is upon us. We do not have to accept the fact as final but we accept the truth as triumphant and the truth as eternal. And the truth eternal is Jesus Christ, who is the master of every problem and every sickness. And there is nothing that will not bow to him. Glory! Glory! Hallelujah! The truth of the matter is this. That same Easter message that you heard last week with Jesus dying on the cross and being raised from the dead, conquering death once and for all, that in that salvation, he gave us healing. Now I went back so that in case any of you doubted this, you could look in your Bible and you could determine how real it was. Here's what I found. I found in Isaiah's prophecy, first, the Messianic prophecy. This is what Isaiah said in the year that he saw the Lord when King Uzziah died. He saw him high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. And he said, woe is me for I am undone and I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. You can read that yourself and understand it. I don't understand all of that about it. 
But he says, surely, Isaiah said, he has borne our sorrows and griefs, our infirmities and our sicknesses. And I'm reading some of the living Bible here. And carried our sorrows. That is, our pains, our infirmities. We are, yet we considered him stricken of God, smitten by him. Now, I mean a big smitten. I don't mean a smitten when somebody walks down the street and you just get smitten by him. I mean smitten as from the Lord. Smitten and stricken by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Now, I know that you can say, the world can say, that's just a nice song and a nice Old Testament prayer. Not so. The Lord wants you to hear more because I'm going to go all the way down and interpret Scripture with Scripture. And the truth of the matter is, not fact of the matter, the truth of the matter is found in Matthew chapter 8 and in verse 16 and 17 when Jesus talked. Jesus recognized that God gave the prophecy through Isaiah in chapter 53. And it says in Matthew 8, 16 and 17, he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. Listen, listen to me. This, Jesus said, was done to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and sicknesses and diseases and diseases and plagues and viruses and carried our sicknesses and diseases. Now the truth of the matter is found more again in what Peter's learned from the crucifixion. Let's put three together because out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, let something be established. Peter learned from this crucifixion and it carried all the way into his old life, older life, when he's an elder. And he wrote about it. And he wrote it different from what he was when he was 35 and 40 years old. He's a seasoned man. And this is what Peter said. Looking back on what Jesus said, he was with him at Galilee. Looking back on what uh, the Messianic prophecy Isaiah said, Peter gave these words. Now this is a man who would be crucified upside down for Jesus. He said, he himself, Jesus, bore our sins in his body on the cross, on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, hear it, you have been healed. You were healed. Praise him. Praise him out here today. Let the heavens know. Let the heavens know it today. Let the heavens know it today. We're healed by the power of Almighty God. Oh, I know the truth of the matter. I want to go further than that. I want to go all the way back. I want to go back to Exodus because some of you believe that the Old Testament really isn't for us. But I want to show you what the Old Testament is for us. Exodus 34 and 10. That the Lord made a covenant saying. Now this is a covenant he cut with the people. He said, I am making a covenant with you. Before all your people, I will do wonders never before done in any nation. I will do this, he said, in all the world. The people you live among, hear this, 
the people you live among, will see how awesome is the work that I, the Lord, the great I am, Jehovah God, will do for you. He wants the people to see it. He wants the world to know that he's a healer. But we hold it from us like it's something that's uh, heretical or something. I want you to know that when I visit Duke University Hospital or the UNC Hospital, and those doctors who take patients from France and England and Washington State and California, one asked me the other day, he said, now in your new work, when the Lord hits you with it, he said, you're going to be laying on of hands too, aren't you? That was Dr. Olson. He wouldn't mind me telling you that. He said, you're going to be laying on of hands, aren't you? Folks, time after time recently, folks have told me that in those hospitals there, they come in and say, would you mind us having a prayer with you? I'm believing that there are more people who believe in miracles and the laying on of hands in the hospitals than there are in some of our churches in this city right here. The truth of the matter is that he verified that in the book of Hebrews, which is written to those people. And he voices it back to those people to substantiate it. You'll have these verses, and you can see it later when you see the program coming live to you, or almost live to you, uh, just like it is right now. You'll see these, these and get these when you watch it on television, or on your computer, rather. Hebrews chapter 2. Are you listening? Here it is. Verse 3 and 4. I found it. It tells us again in the New Testament, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation, this salvation which was first announced by the Lord was confirmed to us and to those who heard him. God also testified to it by, listen, it's not me. I'm not saying it for me. I'm reading you what it says. God also testified to it, verified it, substantiated it proved it. I proved it. Warning you and me to know and all the world to know. Listen. He testified to it by signs and wonders and various miracles and the gifts of the Holy Spirit that were distributed according to his will among the people. I'm ready for a distribution of the gifts of the Holy Spirit upon Northwood Temple. Now let me end. So he's almost there and somebody comes and this woman comes up behind him and touches the hem of his garment. Jesus stops and he's, it takes time to do this and said, somebody touch me. And they said, you know, all these people around you and you say, somebody touch me, but there's a difference in a touch. Oh, it's a human touch in this life that counts. The touch of your hand in mine. Because when shelter is gone and the night is o'er, and food lasts only a day, the touch of your hand and the sound of your voice of faith, of healing, of anointing, lives on in the heart of the people always. Now this is what was written, and I want to share it with you. Jesus said, daughter, you've paid too much now to doctors that didn't, couldn't heal you. They tried. But your faith has made you whole. Listen, not, his, not what he had done, but your faith had connected just like that. You've got to get your faith working with it. Your faith is active. Your faith isn't dead. Your faith is active. Let it act for you. Get a hold of God. Don't fear God. Go to God. Amen. Oh, I wish I was in a church today. I could shout the praises of God under the great sky today. Hallelujah. Give God glory and praise.
glory. And here comes the runner coming up right now. He, man, he's, he's fleet-footed. He's run all the way from, the, from Jairus' house. And he gets to Jesus and he says, whoa, boy, you don't get to Jesus. Peter grabs him and said, hold it, I'm in charge here. He says, the girl is dead. She just died, don't, he don't have to come now. Jesus said, let's go anyway. They said, the fact of the matter is she's dead. But Jesus said, I'm not the fact of the matter. I am the truth of the matter. And when I get there, the fact is gonna go and the truth is gonna stand. You understand? He makes it to the house. The woman's already healed there after 12 years of a bleeding disease. Jesus gets to the house and he sees all these people standing out there in the living Bible, read it from that, okay? The old living paraphrase by Dr. Taylor. Uh, he says, you, you just trust me. That's what Jesus told the man. Come on, boy. He said, you just trust me. Don't trust the fact. Don't trust the judgment. Don't trust the public opinion. Don't trust the doctors. Don't trust them. You trust what I say. For who hath believed our report? Jesus says, now we're going to get them. And they get there and they can't even get in the house because everybody's wailing and gnashing teeth and, oh, she did, she did. Jesus says, what's going on here? They said, you can't get in, sir. She's dead. The little girl, 12 years old, is dead. And the, and the man isn't even here to see her die. Jesus said, everybody stand back. Notice he took charge. There's nothing wrong with taking charge if you do it right. Somebody has to take charge. Jesus said, stand back. Jairus, you and Mrs. Jairus, follow me. Peter, let somebody else handle the gate. James, John, you three, join me inside. And they went inside and Jesus said to them, he said, look, she's only sleeping. They said, <laughs> the fact of the matter is a girl died while ago. We can't get a pulse. That's been about 20, 30 minutes ago. She dead. Jesus said, that's the fact of the matter. The truth of the matter is she's living. She's only asleep. They said, he's, he's off his rocker. He's, he's had one of those fits. He's had one of those charismatic fits over there. He thinks the spirit, he doesn't understand. She's dead. The fact is she's dead. And Jesus walks in and he says, young girl, the truth of the matter is here. Get up off your bed right now. Get up. And the word he spoke was so powerful. The word he spoke was so anointed. The faith of Jairus and his wife and Peter, James, and John was so strong there that that little girl heard all the way into the recesses of the dead and shook on that bed and got up by herself and said, I want some hummus and I want some pita bread and I want some lamb stew. I'm hungry. I hadn't had anything for days. They're starving me. And Jesus said, loose her and let her go. He didn't do anything but just say, when the truth is there, I'll make the difference. Now, let me give you once again. The fact of the matter is, Coronas is real. COVID-19 is real. You look at the blown up cell, it's multicolors, it has the black in it and the red and all the colors and it looks dead, it looks, it looks vicious. Just one cell blown up. The fact is, coronavirus is real. 
You can't say, oh, I can, I can flirt around with this stuff. Rub me right here. You don't do that. Not even Jesus would do that. He said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. You understand him. The fact is, so many people have contracted it. And it's still happening. And we've got to get it stopped. And we're going to get it stopped through people like you. And the people you touch and the people you call. And the people you dare to say, listen, don't touch me. Just hit my, hit my arm or something like that. It's okay. The fact is, businesses have been torn apart. Small businesses are hurting. They got to go back to work. I mean, people to sit in these multi-million dollar mansions, they can think one thing, but the, the small business has got to go back to work. We've got to help them somehow. Fact, people have been separated and isolated long enough. Oh, it's terrible to be isolated from your friends. That's why you feel so good coming here and you don't rush to leave. You can wave at people in the car. The fact, some don't know what they're going to do. The fact, some say, it's time to give up. But I want to say to you today, it's too soon to give up. Don't you give up. Because truth is here. And I've come to say this message to you today, as impotent as it is, I know it's not a Pentecostal message or whatever it is, but listen, I say it because God gave it to me. God wants me to lead you to heal. I believe you've got power in that hand because you've got the Holy Ghost. You've got God and what this world needs is not so much of all this external stuff. All this world needs, as Brother Schembach used to say, is the Holy Ghost. And I believe that we need a touch of him today. A touch of his healing. A touch of his anointing. Let God be true. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he's living whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. I want to tell you, the Lord is here today. I know some of you are really down low. I know that. And you got some friends that are down low. But listen, don't give up the boat right now. Don't give up. Listen, call us. We want to help you any way we can. I'll tell you this, in the last two weeks, even before this started, I felt like we should do it. I didn't know why. And our staff started taking an hour or so every day at the church, getting away from everything and going down the line and calling you. And you say, why'd they call me? It's just to let you know that we've got a staff that cares for you. And we want to help you. Somebody cares for you today. And somebody's praying for you in the middle of the night. I ask you to join that prayer meeting. And join me as we believe for great and mighty things to come. And today, I would be remiss if I didn't do this. I want to say to the devil... I want to take that virus. I can see how it looks right now. And I want to grab it by the throat right now. And I want to hold that thing up in my hand right now. And I want to say to you, you've got to be bound and shackled right now. And I plead the blood of Jesus on you right now. It's time that you can't clean and you have to leave this country and leave this world and go back to hell from where you came. Get out of this land. Get out of this earth. In Jesus' name. Turn God's people loose. Amen. That's it. I believe that's what the Lord wanted me to give you. You can hear it on your computer, and I'm going to ask you to do this. When you get it, I want you to put it on on your Facebook page. If everybody does that, it'll go viral. You talk about viral, it'll go viral. In one day, it'll go viral around the world many, many times. 
I'm asking you to do that. I'm asking you to call somebody. I'm asking you to bring somebody back next week because we're going to meet right here and you're going to tell somebody we're going back and more of healing is coming to us. The healing ministry is on. Oh, where the healing waters flow. Oh, the joy is celestial glow. Oh, there's peace and rest and love. Where the healing waters flow. Let God be true. Some of you in this cars right now, I pray for you right now. I wish I had the oil to put on you right now. Put your hand on the place that hurts you the most right now. God, touch that person right now and heal them. Lord, if there be any sin in the, in the cars, Lord, I pray that you'll forgive us of sins right now and come into our life and make us whole and help us to reach out and touch somebody else. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Be sure to honk at somebody when you leave and listen to the music as you leave as, uh, as this young woman uh, uh, sings for you. Alexis. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. 